Hello, welcome to The Gun Shop. Today we're going to be doing a little comparison video for you. We're going to be comparing this, the Browning B725 Hunter, versus this, the Browning B525 Field. So, at some point, about 100 years ago, there was a man called John Moses Browning, and he invented an over and under shotgun. At the time, they weren't the most popular thing in the world, although they were around, certainly. And he called it the Browning Superposed. That gun was pretty much made continuously all the way up until now, through various guises, be it uh, Japanese built ones, Belgian built ones, and they're all pretty much fantastic. He hit the nail on the head in terms of as near as damn it to shotgun perfection and reliability as you could have got at the time. And that same pretty much stands today, not a lot has changed, it's two barrels, a trigger and a stock, and you hold it together and it handles nice and you kill stuff. That's pretty much what this gun was designed to do. Times have changed a little bit, but nowadays we've never responded better to marketing and that sort of thing and technology in guns. So, Browning feeling, I think, probably feeling the hurt a little bit through the up and coming Italian brands and some of the bigger Italian brands certainly taking their the lion's share of the market. They produced this bad boy, the Browning B725. A good reason to change things radically. And they did. So, uh, let's start from the very back and we'll work our way through these guns and sort of look talk about the differences between them. So, first things first, butt pads. This one has a hand finished plastic plate as they all did up until a couple of years ago. Very nice. Whereas the 725 has the more modern Inflex interchangeable pad system. A lot of other brands have been doing interchangeable pads for a long, long time. And Browning just Keeping up with the times, really. As much as I like to earn money out of fitting pads to guns and that sort of thing, and that's good for us, it's not great for you if you can save yourself a bit of money and have a, an inch pad for the summer and half an inch pad for the winter, and all you have to do is stick a screwdriver in and, and wrench them apart. So, great idea. Certainly a good idea, maybe. Uh, moving on, uh, their wood grades have stayed very consistent. When most people change models, they also drop grades in wood. Both of these are very, very nice grade 2 plus 3s. Pleasant, very, very pleasant. In terms of dimension, in terms of dimension, actually they've changed a little bit. Uh, Browning in the 725 have taken, unlike the 520, which is all quite on a narrow band, they've split quite seriously between the Hunter and the Sporter, and that's really good. It's led the field to be slightly flatter than they ever were and the sporters to be slightly higher than they ever were and that allows you to be able to find a gun that's going to fit you slightly better within their range as opposed to the 525 which is always a little bit more like well that's how we make a stock and we're going to vary it by about five mil and that's a lot they've they've allowed for a little bit more they've got more cant on the guns they've got a little bit more cast on the guns and there's just a little bit more good so moving on both hand checkered which is nice uh, the hand checkering on these Japanese guns is always fantastic and vastly better than the machine versions. You end up with sharper, harder points, which last longer. That's great, but you know, isn't a real thing to think. They haven't changed that. What they have changed, however, on the Hunter is they've put a swept back semi pistol grip, almost Prince of Wales flat knob style grip on it. Whereas this is more of a semi pistol grip, semi to full pistol grip. Is that better? I don't know. Again, it's a personal preference thing, and the full sporter now has a full pistol grip, palm swell, the works. So, you know, they really have split that. But the Hunter is probably, I think, personally, this Prince of Wales style is better for that game. It just allows for a more versatile grip. What is worth, worth, wearing, worth bearing in mind, however, is the distance between the trigger and the actual end of that cap has increased. On the Browning, it's... On the Browning. On the 525, it's at 94 mil. And on this badger, it is 111. So it's nearly two centimeters, nearly three quarters, three quarters of an inch greater, you know. And that's enough that that three quarters of an inch that drops your hand back is means you're going to probably need an extra quarter of an inch on the back of the gun. Just worth bearing in mind, certainly, when it comes to actual gun fit, if you're going to get a gun and hand your measurements over that if you're shooting a pistol grip gun you need a bit more length with this Prince of Wales style. Okay, uh, the safety catch hasn't changed a particular amount, just slightly different shape, but that's about it. The triggers on the Hunter 
the actual blade hasn't changed. Uh, but something that is worth bearing in mind is that the trigger pulls on the 525 are inertia driven, so that's four and a half pounds. And if you just give it a little tap to simulate recoil, that'll get the inertia block moved over onto the second barrel. Uh, four and three eighths. Perfect. You know, very, very good. Good trigger pulls. We like that. That's great. The 725, however, is a very different beast. And this is where it starts to improve, perhaps, or change. Right, so it's three and a half pounds. And, sorry, I just need to become incompetent. Four and a half pounds. Okay, so what we've just seen there, it's a mechanical trigger. Um, mechanical triggers are a love-hate thing. They feel very different to an inertia trigger. They operate very differently to an inertia trigger. And they can have different issues with the reliability and working quality than each other. So they are very different. Um, part of that, the, the sear mechanism works very, very similar in these two, by the way. And actually, internals in the 725 are just a variant, let's say, on the 525. They'll change masses on the inside. What has changed, however, is the size. So this is 63 mil deep, 64 mil, and this. Wait a second, sorry, that was me being insane. This is 64 mil, and this is 68 mil. So it's a four mil decrease in depth of the action. That depth of action means the trigger engagement, the actual way the trigger connects with these sears, is less room, less margin for error. Very, very nice, actually, and it works very well, as you can see, with a lighter trigger pull, certainly. And actually, we've been playing with this gun, and on average, it has a heavy break for it. There's nothing more than four pounds. It all runs between three and a half and three and a quarter pounds, which is great. Whereas this is consistently four, four and a half. And although you can decrease that, it's probably best not to play with it on a Browning. Really, they're built well, they work. So you've got the mechanical trigger aspect versus the inertia trigger aspect. That depth, that depth changes everything. That depth changes the width of the neck by four mil as well. It changes the depth of the action on the forend by, and the 725 is, what's that, 65? And that's 71 deep, and that'll be deeper at the back of the forend. As you can see, you've got this sort of roach belly forend there almost to the front of the Schnabel. So on a deeper action, it produces a very big gun. Whereas this is an Amer American style rounded forend, but it's almost flat off the bottom of the action. A much lower profile gun. And I'm thinking that's pretty much to copy one of their closest competitors in terms of making it a little bit smaller and trying to get back some business of that. They're like, ooh, we've produced a gun that's better than them and it's a bit more similar, a bit less Browning-like because everyone says Brownings are big and heavy, but they're not. Um, let's not worry about that. So that action is decreased in height. Width. Actually, it's increased in width over this than 2 mil, and that produces a nicer, rounder feel, a different rounder feel rather than nicer than the 525. Uh, both have vented top ribs and solid mid ribs, and I have one 28 inch 525 and the 75 is a 30 inch. Um, just open. Uh, the 75 we're running the DS choke, so the choke systems have changed, the barrel technology has changed, but, you know, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. The shot comes out the end and flies that way. It's the way it handles that changes very, very much. So there's your main key, there's your key differences, I suppose. And a lot of the other bits are really more subjective. And here's my thoughts on the subject. I've had Browning since I was a kid. I've... I've loved and fallen in love with them. I've owned other brands as well, but I started on a Browning GTI and they were a brilliant, brilliant gun. I've owned a 325, a 425, I've owned a 525. I've played with many, many of these guns and they are a very good recipe. They're a very good recipe. More to the point, they're all so damn similar, they all feel nice. Where we fall down in terms of niceness with the 725 is they have, they're so diverse, they've kind of lost their their gun-centric soul, perhaps, that the 525 series had. And I don't like that. No, that's just me. However, I've picked up some 725s that I quite like. 
and I've picked up some that I've truly disliked. You know, the styling is, is changed a lot, it's a lot sleeker, a little bit more Synergy-esque, and it doesn't have that same look and appeal to me as the 525 does. The 525 looks like a shotgun that I, it just feels familiar. And you can't beat familiarity, can you? You really can't. But what I'm truly trying to get across is, I think you generally, I just find the 525 more shootable, and I don't know why. I don't know why it is, and it's not just me. I've had, I've got loads of clients who've bought them and upgraded, and then brought them back, and they have fallen out of love with the 725, and have either moved back or moved across or given up, or they've changed something. They've changed something. And that's, like I say, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I wouldn't say it's a particularly good thing either. Engraving wise, it changes uh, very much, and as with all the modern Brownings and the modern Marukus, I believe, in all honesty, in the last sort of year, their engraving quality has gone downhill, it's less deep. Perhaps it's more intricate, perhaps it's more modern, but it doesn't have that same oldie, weldy, depth, carvy, proper. It looks hand engraved on a 525, even though it's not. Whereas on the 725 and the later 525s, and now the Mark 60s and all that sort of thing, they, they are vying towards cheaper. And I understand that's because the, they don't want the prices to go up. But that doesn't really do me any favours. I would like a pretty looking gun. Or else I'm going to buy an older gun. That's just my thoughts anyway. Uh, let me know what you think. Of, of course, I'm very interested to those of you who have 725s and why you prefer it over a 525. But for me, you just cannot beat the heritage, the credence, the history that you get when you pick one of these up. It feels nice. They do just feel lovely. And you can pick up this, a 425, 525, a B25, an A1, a B2G, and they all feel I don't like going home when you pick one up. Uh, anyway, I'm clearly biased. Let me know what you think. I'll see you later. Take care.